Welcome to the Bayshore Podcast. As listeners each week, whether through iTunes or through the church app, you're part of our church family. We would love for you to share stories of how Bayshore is impacting your life by sending us an email at amen at bayshorecc.org. As always, you can find all kinds of information and content on our website, bayshorecc.org. There's also our church app, which you could download by going to bayshorecc.org slash app. So thanks again for joining us this week, and we hope that today's message is a blessing to you. Well, what would Christmas be without kids? Two of those were my grandkids, and hence the reason for that video. I wanted to show you my grandkids. How many out there have grandkids? You have grandkids? How many? Is anybody here, is anybody a great-grandparent this morning? You have great-grandkids? Anybody out here? Oh, let's give these great-grandparents a hand. That's amazing. <clears throat> Cheryl to make Christmas really special. Well, I have uh, one particular text I want to read this morning for us as we uh, do our Christmas talk before we sing some uh, great carols and have a uh, candlelight uh, service. I want to read uh, a scripture found in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 15, just one verse. And I think it really is a powerful verse about Christmas. And it says in 2 Corinthians 9, 15, thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. Some of the other translations uh, call it the inexpressible gift. So when I think about Christmas, one of the things I think about is the word gift. Gift is a big, big word for Christmas. We buy gifts, we wrap gifts, uh, we go through the process of finding gifts. So I think that gifts is a really, really very appropriate word for Christmas. And basically what the gospel and the New Testament tells us is that Jesus is God's gift to us. Jesus is God's gift to us, and salvation is a gift to us. For by grace we're saved through faith, not of ourselves, lest any man should boast. And the Bible talks repeatedly about our relationship with Jesus and our connection to Jesus and salvation being a gift. So I think about uh, the word gift is a really, really incredible word for Christmas, and uh, I think about, you know, my whole process of, of getting gifts. I basically buy gifts for my wife, Karen, and she buys gifts for everybody else. And I love Karen, so I go shopping for her, and I pray for the Lord to help me find some really cool gifts for her. And uh, I don't mind that part at all. But what I really, really mind is wrapping gifts. Does anybody out there hate to wrap gifts? You hate to wrap gifts. That's me. I don't mind buying them, I don't mind finding them, I don't mind shopping, but when it comes to wrapping gifts, I hate to wrap gifts. So people say, well, you know, you don't have to wrap gifts anymore, you can put it in a bag. Well, everybody knows if you put it in a bag, that says, I really don't care, right? (laughs) I mean, really, that is the biggest cop out. Put it in a bag and put tissue paper over it. I know that says, I don't care. So I try to wrap gifts, and I work at it, and my gifts are very distinguishable under the Christmas tree. It looks like a two-year-old wrapped those gifts. And I try, but I don't do very good at it. And you think about, who was it that wrapped the first gift at Christmas? The first gift at Christmas was not brought by the Magi. You know, the Magi, the three gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh that was given uh, to the Christ child in Bethlehem. By the way, they didn't, you know, we don't know that there was three wise men. We just knew there were three gifts. It could have been ten wise men or two wise men. But the first gift given was not given by the wise men. The first gift was already in the manger. It was the gift that God gave to the world, that Jesus was the gift. And if Jesus was the first Christmas gift ever given, then who was the person who wrapped the first, gift, uh, first Christmas gift? Well, it was Mary. Mary who wrapped the first Christmas gift. It says in the Gospel of Luke, it says that, that she wrapped him in, the NIV says, strips of cloth. The old translations, the English Standard Version, the King James Version, says she wrapped him in swaddling clothes. 
which were basically long strips of cloth. And the reason that they swaddled children was it made children, it helped them, infants, to transition from the tightness of the womb to the world they were born in. It made them feel secure. It made them sleep better. made them uh, less prone to scratch themselves. And modern cultures still have, you know, swaddling of babies. And so Jesus was wrapped by Mary. The first Christmas gift ever was wrapped by Mary. Isn't that incredible? Think about that. He, the first Christmas gift was Jesus, and the first person to wrap the first Christmas gift was Mary. And it wasn't with decorative paper, but it was with swaddling clothes or strips of cloth. And I think about you know, how God wrapped Jesus as well, getting the gift ready for this world. The Bible says this in, in Galatians 4.4. 4. I'll put that on the screen here. Galatians 4.4 4 says this. It says, in the fullness of time, or in the full time, God gave his son, born of a woman, born under the law. So it says in Galatians 4, 4, in the fullness of time, God gave his son. And what does that mean, that in the fullness of time? Basically, that means Jesus was wrapped in history. He was wrapped. God prepared the world for his son to be born in. You think about how God prepared the world. It was the perfect time. We, we think that Jesus was born historically. The scholars say that Jesus was born sometime between 6 B.C. and 4 B.C. He wasn't born on the year zero. That, that was a mistake in the calendar. We know that King Herod died 4 B.C. So we know Jesus had to be born sometime before King Herod died. So he was born in that point of history. Well, what was happening in that point of history? Here's a couple things for you to think about. Uh, There's a guy named Alexander the Great. Anybody ever hear of a guy named Alexander the Great? Incredible person in history. Died in June of 323 B.C., 300 years basically before Jesus was born. And he, he traveled the world and he conquered the world. And he, and he did what historians call he Hellenized the world. In other words, the whole world was made to speak the Greek language. And there was a thing called uh, that Alexander the Great spread far and wide, and it was called Koine Greek. And so when Jesus was born in the world, at the point in history that he was born, there was one universal language. And so the, the apostles would write the scriptures, they would write the gospels in the language that everybody knew. And so it was the fullness of time, the perfect time Jesus was born in history. Another thing that was happening when Jesus was born is uh, the Romans were in charge, the Roman Empire. Ever, anybody ever hear of the Roman Empire? The Roman Empire was the, uh, was the ruling dynasty when Jesus was born. And here's what's interesting about the Roman Empire. The Roman Empire did a lot of things, but one of the things they did is they filled the world, the known world, with roads. They were the, uh, the ancient uh, builders of roads. And uh, the uh, Encyclopedia Britannica said that, that the Romans were the ancient road experts. Listen to this. They built 50,000 miles of roads. And when did they start building those roads? They start building those roads 312 B.C., about the time that Alexander the Great died. So you've got a universal language that's been put in place where everybody knows. And then at the same time, roads are beginning to be built, and the Romans built 50,000 miles of roads. How many have ever heard the, the term, uh, all roads lead to Rome? Anybody ever hear that term? Well, it was literally true. They started building these roads out from Rome, and they went all over the Roman Empire. And when the Apostle Paul and people that were preaching the gospel, how did they spread the gospel? They walked on the roads, the paved roads that the Romans had prepared, and they were writing in the Greek language. And so the world was perfectly situated for Jesus to be born. The Bible says in Galatians 4, 4, that Jesus was born under the law. Moses had given the law. People had tried to keep the law. And so he was born under the law. You got, you got the Greek language. You got Roman roads. And then you have people that have been under the law of Moses for over 2,000 years. And so these people are frustrated and they can't keep the law. A guy in my men's group asked me a while back. He said, you know, it's terrible that Moses went on the, 
Mount Sinai and got the law, the Ten Commandments, and then he came down and threw them and broke them because he got mad at the people parting at the foot of the mountain. And I said to him, you know why Moses threw those tablets down and broke the Ten Commandments? It was symbolic that every man had broken the law. And we've all broken the law. How many know that you've broken at least one of the Ten Commandments? Just raise your hand. At least one of them. And then Jesus, you know, he, 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 he made sure that we understood what that meant. He said, you know, just because you, uh, you know, hadn't physically committed adultery, he said in the Sermon on the Mount, if you thought about it, then you've broken the law. And so when Jesus was born under the law that everybody had broken. So he's born in the perfect time in history. And he was born and there God had prepared the world and God had wrapped the gift of Jesus. God had prepared everything, wrapped the gift of Jesus, preparing him for the world, preparing the world for him to come. And so he came in the fullness of time. Say this to me, in the fullness of time, at just the right moment, Jesus was born. Incredible, incredible story. So he's the great gift. He's the gift, the first Christmas gift, wrapped by Mary in swaddling clothes, wrapped by God in history and language and technology. Jesus was born at the right moment. You think about, think about gifts. If, 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 if Jesus is the first gift of Christmas, and Christmas is primarily about Jesus being a gift, and you think about getting the gift of Christ at Christmas, just think about what you do with a gift. What is it about a gift? A couple things about a gift that's important. First of all, what I love about gifts most of all is this. Gifts are free. How many love that? How many have ever, you know, been sitting around a Christmas tree and you open all these gifts and then you pull out a checkbook and say, what do I owe you for this? <laughs> Nobody does that. Nobody's going to do that. I'm never going to do that. <laughs> you know, you don't get an invoice from your from your mom and dad, you know, 30 days after Christmas and asking you to pay for the sweater they gave you for Christmas. Christmas gifts are free and salvation is free. A gift, listen to this, a gift is purchased by someone else. It's purchased by the giver to give freely to the person who receives it. A gift is purchased and paid for by the giver they've given freely to the person who receives. So what is our responsibility toward the gift of Christ? What's our responsibility toward the gift of salvation? What's our responsibility? Here's our responsibility. Primarily our responsibility toward the gift of Christmas and the gift of salvation is thankfulness. To be grateful. To be grateful. This is my role. This is my role in salvation. My role in salvation is gratitude. That's why Bayshore, when our band plays every Sunday, you know, man, we're like worshiping Jesus, loving Jesus, because our job is not to earn salvation. Our job is to be grateful for salvation. To be grateful for salvation. People give, you know, care and I gifts at Christmas. We just love it. We love gifts, and people uh, give us really neat things and tell us how much they love us, and they give us movie passes and Starbucks gift cards and Starbucks gift cards and Starbucks gift cards. <laughs> Just love it. I love Starbucks gift cards. Anyhow, uh, at Starbucks. And, uh, but whenever I get a gift, I always, I always, you know, unless I really, really forget, I mean, I always write a thank you note. And I thank him for that Starbucks gift card. Thank you. I'm so thankful that you thought of me. I'm grateful. I'm so grateful. And that is what our job is in salvation. Our job is gratitude. To be grateful. It says in the book of Hebrews, How shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? And God, I'm so thankful for his Great salvation. I'm thankful for that. So I'm watching the CBS News on uh, Tuesday night. And uh, I don't often get to watch the news. And I just turned it on. 
uh, 806 and watching CBS News, and there's a story on CBS News. This is, this is not Christian TV. This is not TBN. This is not Pat Robertson, CBN. This is CBS Secular News. And they tell a story on the news about a little girl uh, named Roxley Doss who had an incurable brain tumor. An incurable brain tumor. And the type of brain tumor that she had, only 1%, 1% of the people that had that brain tumor, very rare type of brain tumor, about 300 kids get it a year, only 1% of the children that get that brain tumor uh, live uh, over or up to five years. And they've given this little girl months to live. Months to live. This is CBS Sector News. And it says the medical world is befuddled. And they put the x-ray of her skull on the TV screen. And here's what they showed. They showed that her parents prayed for this brain tumor to disappear. And they prayed and they prayed And the doctors don't know what happened, but the brain tumor is gone. And they got six other hospitals to verify this, including John Hopkins, and they can't find the brain tumor. So national TV. So national TV, this is not TBN. This is not Pat Robertson. This is not... The weird hairdo people on Christian TV. (laughs) This is sector news and they're saying, we don't know what to say about this, but that tumor's gone. And it says the medical world is befuddled. And then they put the camera on mom and dad, Scott and Gina Doss. And Gina Doss said, we prayed for a miracle. And her husband, Scott, said, praise God. On Sector CBS National TV. They were really, really grateful. And they said, we've got the greatest Christmas present ever. Here's a picture of this little girl in the hospital bed. This is Roxy Doss. Three months ago had cancer. Now they can't even find the tumor. And here's a picture of her riding her horse. She's back to riding her horse and doing the things she loves. And so I think that's such a cool story. I'm watching that. I'm sitting on the edge of my sectional you know, couch and watching that, and I'm watching CBS pray for people to pray, uh, pay for people to praise God on national television. Our job, our job at salvation, our job with Jesus, our job as Christians is to be grateful. I'm grat- I'm filled with gratitude. So our job is to be grateful, and our job is this. Our job is. To receive the gift. Gratitude and receptivity to receive the gift. To receive the gift of salvation. It says in the book of John, For as many as received him, to him he gave the power or the right to become the sons and daughters of God. So a gift basically is this. A gift is something that you receive. Something that you receive. You've got to have a receiver. You've got to accept the gift that's been given. A gift is absolutely useless unless it's received. And I, for one, am never going to turn down a gift. You give me a gift, Starbucks gift card. You give me a gift, <laughs> and I'm going to receive that gift. A few years ago, I was uh, setting up our manger scenes. We've got all these manger scenes in a house, and... So I'm trying to set up the manger scenes. Karen decorates the tree. I bring the tree down, and she puts the lights on it and does all the decorating, and I just bring the tree down, and then I set the manger scenes up usually. And so we got all these manger scenes. So this one manger scene, I'm trying to set up, and I set the, the, the manger, you know, the little manger part down, and I can't find baby Jesus, which kind of messes up the whole story. You know, here's a picture of, of the manger there, and I can't find baby Jesus. I'm looking everywhere. This little tiny Jesus is supposed to go in there. So being the obsessive, compulsive person that I am, I like rip the house apart trying to find baby Jesus because a manger scene without baby Jesus is really not a manger scene. 
So I looked and I looked, wasted about an hour and a half trying to find baby Jesus. Then I happened to look at the other fixtures and I realized that Mary was already holding baby Jesus. <laughs> Here's a picture of her holding baby Jesus. Can you say moron? Can you say that? <laughs> She's already holding baby Jesus. And I was looking for baby Jesus. Baby Jesus was not in the manger. Baby Jesus was in the arms of Mary. So Christmas is not about looking at Jesus, knowing about Jesus. Christmas is about holding Jesus and accepting Jesus. The gift has to be accepted. You have to receive the gift. I was, got up the other morning and I was making coffee, Starbucks coffee from a Starbucks gift card somebody had given me. <laughs> if you ever wake up and you're not really awake, you're just kind of like the walking dead. I mean, you're waking up and I'm, I'm like, you know, I had, and I poured my, cup the water in there and I flipped the switch and I had put the coffee in there and, and I'm just I'm just wandering I am like out of it I'm not you know I'm not awake yet and about 10 minutes later I come into the kitchen and the, and the floor is wet and the reason the floor is wet is because I didn't put a coffee pot in the coffee machine and all the coffee around here's a picture of my uh, my coffee thing and it just ran out all I forgot to put the co coffee pot in there so this is a big problem you can have something really wonderful but you've got to have the capacity to receive that which is wonderful that's been given to you and that is the essence of a gift an essence of a gift is the gift must be received. And when does the gift when is the gift to be received? The Bible says in John 6:44, this scripture speaks to me so deeply. John 6:44 says no man can come to the Father except the Father draw him. And there's a moment in our lives when we hear the gospel preached like you're hearing the gospel being preached right now about Jesus being the gift. There's a moment when we hear the gospel being preached. The Holy Spirit taps us on the shoulder. And we have to respond to receiving the Lord. It says the same thing in John 3. The wind blows where it decides to blow. Nobody can control the wind. When the Holy Spirit moves on you. And the Holy Spirit speaks to you. And the Holy Spirit shows Jesus to you. You need to respond by receiving Jesus. I was walking down the road the other day. And as I was walking down the road, uh, I saw our mail carrier scooting up and down the road. She was just delivering mail and packages everywhere. And she was just scooting everywhere. And she passed me as I was walking. And she pulled in front of, the, in front of me and she pulled into the house that I was coming to, that I was walking to, and she pulled up in the driveway and she honked on the horn. And the signal of the mailman honking on the horn means she's got a package for you, that you've got to come out and get that package. And so I was walking and I was wondering if the person that heard, the person that was in the house, if she heard the horn honk, and if she would come and open the door to get her package. And here's a picture of that uh, scene. I was walking down the road and the mail carrier's up there. There's a mail carrier there and, and the door opens. And as the door opens, she comes and she gets her package. The bottom line is, when the Holy Spirit speaks to us, it's like the mailman honking the horn. Are we going to open the door? Are we going to receive the package? Or are we not going to respond to that? Say this with me as we summarize this message this morning. Say this with me. 
A gift is only a gift when it's received from the giver. I'd like you to just, if you're a person who uh, knows Jesus this morning, loves Jesus, would you just lift your hand in gratitude right now? Our gift in salvation, our part of salvation is gratitude. Would you give thanks right now? Say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. My, my role in salvation is gratitude. Lord, I am so grateful for you. I'm so grateful for you. And everybody here that maybe you haven't ever received Jesus, you haven't made Jesus the Lord of your life, you can put your hands down now. And If you're here this morning, you say, Pastor Danny, would you pray for me in this final prayer that I would receive Jesus this morning? I feel the tapping of the Holy Spirit on my shoulder. I hear the honk of the horn. I, I hear the gospel. It's a gift. It's, it's not of my works. It's not of my effort. It's of my receptivity. And I want to receive Jesus this morning. Would you just raise your hand and, and just say, and I want to be included in that prayer this morning. Just lift your hand up real high. Don't be ashamed because we're not to ever be ashamed of the gospel, the wonderful gift of Jesus. Jesus came to us in broad daylight to give his life for us. Just lift your hand up high. Thank you for doing that. How about somebody here this morning that maybe you're here and you've drifted far away from God in 2018. Your life has been off the rails and you haven't been really following Jesus. You haven't been really serving the Lord. You haven't been attending church. You haven't been really focused. You're not really, you know, growing in your faith. And you just kind of gotten off the rails this year. And you say, Pastor Danny, would you pray for me in this service? Because I want, to be, I want to be different in 2019. I want the Holy Spirit to come in and change my life. Just lift your hand to the Lord if you're a person that's kind of drifted away and you need the Lord to help you. Thank you for your honesty. Thank you so much for that. Let's, let's all lift our hands right now. And we're going to pray for people that are receiving Jesus right now, accepting God's great gift. Just lift your hands to the Lord in gratitude. And let's pray this out loud together. Everybody together. Let's help everybody that's receiving Jesus right now. If you know Jesus, just pray this out loud to help people around you that are receiving Jesus right now. Say this with me. Lord Jesus, I'm in desperate need of you. I thank you, Lord, that you are a gift to me. That you have paid the full price for my sin for my wickedness, for my evil. I repent of my sins and I turn to you and I put my faith in you. I believe, Jesus, that you are the Son of God, that you died on the cross for me, that you've been raised from the dead. And let's say this together out loud. I make you the Lord of my life. I've made a mess of my life. Now I make you. Lord of my life. Now lift your hands up, everybody. Christian, uh, old and new, a person that just became Christian, begin to give thanks to Jesus. A person that has coming back to Jesus, just thank him and give him gratitude because he loves you and he cares about you. Thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing.